Welcome back to It Resolves and a brand new year. Guys, let's make 2023 the best year in It Resolves history. Welcome back, everybody. I know it has been quite some time since you have seen my amazing face. Just kidding. It has been quite some time, though, guys. I really do miss you guys. It's been a couple weeks at the very least. Getting through the holidays, enjoying some family time, some time with friends. I hope you guys got to enjoy that as much as I did. I really do appreciate everybody just taking some time off. Enjoy, enjoy the family, enjoy your friends, enjoy the fun stuff for a little bit. We can come back together now and enjoy some more content, hopefully some very fun content because we're, we're going to change things up a little bit this year. We got some new stuff coming. We got some really exciting videos planned in the near future, as well as new series planned for the future uh, that we really do hope you guys will enjoy between John and myself. We've got a lot of really fun things planned, so do stay tuned for that. We're kicking off with something different right off the bat. We are going through a best of one historic event today. Now we're doing that with Azorius Affinity, which is a deck that we played in the fall of last year uh, for a little bit. We, I don't think we did a full event, but we did do a uh, MTG and chill video as well as just a regular gameplay video, and it was amazing. Now this is a slightly different variation of the deck, which I am not gonna go through all the details of, but to give you the highlights, the idea is basically we wanna play a lot of artifacts and capitalize on those artifacts using cards like Nettle Cyst, which get a lot, uh, a lot stronger for every artifact or enchantment we have. Uh, we want to get Karn down minus two for that same effect. Uh, and then ideally get Thought Monitor down, which is going to hopefully be an evasive threat that also draws us cards that we should only ever have to spend like one or two mana on, depending on the circumstances, of course. Uh, we do have a lot of other tools in the arsenal for this deck, of course. We get to feature some of these artifact lands, which is really fun. But all in all, that's the basis of the deck. Now we'll talk about some of the nuances as we go through these games here, because we do hopefully have a lot of games to go through, and that gives you guys a little bit more gameplay to see. So, we're going to run this through the, the event, guys. I hope you will stick with me through the entirety of it. It's going to be a blast. I love this deck. This is such a fun build. Let's do it, guys. Let's jump right in, and we'll talk about all the holiday stuff and all the news as we go through. It'll, it'll be a blast. All right, everybody, and here we are for game number one. Now, how do we feel about this hand? A little bit slow, but the Ingenious Smith really does help us out. A lot of times you can aggressively mulligan with a deck like this for a handful of reasons. Mostly, the deck's cheap. It's pretty easy to just start throwing stuff down. Uh, and while this isn't necessarily the best hand, it should be okay. Uh, depending on what we find ourselves up against this time. So, I'm actually going to just go for the Ingenious Smith, hoping they didn't have a counter, uh, which thankfully they didn't. It looks like we're going to pick up a Retrofitter Foundry, which is a really powerful card for this deck for various reasons. Uh, now, one thing I will mention, looking at this, we clearly have what I assume is a control deck. Uh, it's always helpful to be able to get the Esper Sentinel down as early as we can here. Uh, what I am going to do... I'm going to get the, the Esper Sentinel down now. It's going to trigger the uh, Ingenious uh, Smith. And then I am going to go ahead and get that Reality Chip off of the field. That's always a bit of a scary card. We're just not interested in dealing with it. I'm going to go ahead and throw that Retrofitter Foundry down as well. For anybody that doesn't know, look at the top card of your library at any time. If it's attached to a creature, you can play lands and cast spells from the top of your deck. That's obviously very, very good. Uh, but Esper Sentinel is going to tax uh, a lot of what they might have in store for us, given this does look like a bit of a control -y build. Uh, and so I'm hoping that they just don't have a great way to deal with it without giving us a card, uh, which is always helpful. We also just have, you know, a couple of artifacts on the field that even if they deal with our creatures, we have ways of, you know, capitalizing on some of these more powerful things. So uh, this should be interesting. They're going to just draw a card. That's perfectly fine. Land is always good. Uh, all right. So how do we want to handle this? Um, again, we do have some options. I'm going to glass casket, I think. Do I care? Yeah, why not? We're going to get the glass casket off the field. We don't really have to, let's be honest, but it's fun. I like removing all the stuff. Uh, and we'll get a little creature here as well. Uh, what this allows us to do is sacrifice the Thopter for a 4-4 and just kind of increase our clock here uh, and still keep the uh, the barbed spike around if we need it. So there's a lot of benefit to getting this down early. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it sticks. 
Uh, that's fine, actually. Siphon Insight, um, truthfully, for a non-affinity deck to be picking up, you know, a card from the affinity deck, there are certainly cards that are good, don't get me wrong, but like 99 per- not 99, like 80% of the cards aren't great. That was definitely one that was good, though, so well done, opponent. Uh, let's go ahead and increase the clock as best we can. They've only got one mana available, uh, and so that seems like the easiest way to do this. Uh, if we had drawn a land there, we actually could have gotten in for even more. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Um, I'll give this guy flying, why not? Uh, and I think just because we want to trigger the smith, we go here. Um, and that just adds up to quite a bit of damage that they are going to have to contend with. We also aren't over committing, right? The ingenious smith helps us rebuild, so if they find a sweeper this turn, uh, we aren't 100% you know, engrossed in the board. We've got follow-up plays. Uh, and so I feel like that might just be the best option. Getting that Foundry down is so good for a deck like this because that long-term value of just spitting out a token every turn, especially with a Smith on the field, like you're getting basically two extra power on the board as well as an extra body. I, you can't really go wrong with that. So definitely solid. Let's see what the opponent has. It might just be that they don't have an option. Uh, and given they siphoned insight last turn, I feel like they probably are not in a great spot. Uh, all right. So that's gonna uh, immediately trigger the ingenious myth. So we actually don't have to pop the founder yet. I am just gonna attack uh, with, I think just everything. Uh, there is a world where this is like a little aggro, but they're not going to have like a settle the wreckage or anything. Um, and this, while annoying, is not the end of the world. Um, in fact, I really don't even think this is close to enough. They can kill probably the smith. Uh, so we did have an out, uh, which would have been to very simply just play the nettle cyst, equip it up to something. Um, that would have won the game this turn. Um, but again, I, I, don't, I don't think that was the right call personally. I think we definitely made the right call as is. Um, all right, let's get you down. Uh, sure, we'll pick up a land. Not very exciting, but that's fine. Uh, and then here, I think we just go for the nettle cyst. It's such a big hit. It's an 11-11. Like, they have to sweep here. Uh, and even if they do, we've got a way of getting another creature down, obviously built in with the Foundry or the Barbed Spike. So, like, we have got a lot of options to get more stuff down. Uh, they'd literally have to destroy all artifacts, I think, for this to be a problem. And with Esper Sentinel taxing here, like, that's pretty helpful. <laughs> Metallic Rebuke is quite good. Um, that would prevent a potential Atar or Urtai, excuse me. Uh, but, again, I think we are in a reasonable position regardless. They were not willing to pay the tax, which is interesting. Uh, guys, as we're kind of wrapping this game up, because I do think we are kind of getting down to it here, uh, I just want to ask, you know, I mentioned we got some family time in. Oh, they killed themselves. <laughs> we got some family time in. I just am curious what you guys did over the break. Did you have some fun? Did you get some family time in? Maybe it wasn't the best holiday. Maybe it was great. Uh, let me know in the comment section. I'd love to see what you guys got up to. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into game two, guys. All right, guys, and here we are for game number two. I will keep this. Uh, this is a pretty easy keep, actually. We've got the Esper Sentinel turn one, if we would like it. They are a Gigantha deck. Again, I'm not well versed on Historic, so honestly, not sure what to expect. Uh, I'm sure a more experienced Historic player probably does know. I unfortunately don't, uh, so that's okay. I do want to throw this Esper Sentinel out though as much as possible. It's such a, or as early as possible, excuse me. It's such a safe bet uh, because even if they go to remove it, say they play a black land and, or in this case, a red land and they try and burn it, it's just like an immediate, hey, that's going to be a little harder than you think. Um, and so in that world, I think this is just such a strong play right off the bat. Uh, here, I am definitely just going to portable hold this. Again, this, I think. Um, I'm assuming this is just the Magecraft deck, uh, that is it style Magecraft deck? Uh, in which case this should be a relatively straightforward thing. We just need to remove all of their threats as best we can or counter them one for one. Okay, uh, so 
again, this is the nice thing. They can either tax it, in which case they don't have a follow-up play, which is what they did, or, you know, they have to find another solution. Uh, fortunately for us, they really didn't have any other follow-up plays. I'm actually going to go Smith here and refill the hand a little bit. We are running low on cards while they have a smattering of cards in their hand. Six. Five. Uh, and so I did want to make sure we had, you know, just enough cards in hand to actually do some, some work. <clears throat> it is worth noting, if we put the Barb Spike out there, we can use the Foundry to sacrifice the uh, the Thopter token and actually get a 4-4 like right off the bat. Uh, we did kind of slow ourselves down by not doing that, but I think it's okay. Um, this is a little scary for sure. Because this has flashback, this is just a card that, you know, we have to be very, very concerned about. Uh, very nice. All right, so definitely going to throw the Sentinel down first. This will probably bait like a play with fire if they have it. In this case, a consider. Uh, so the reason being, obviously, they don't want to give us an extra card. And if they didn't play it now, they would be giving us an extra card. So it just makes it easy for, for us to uh, bait anything we want out there. Uh, I'm just going to kind of play everything. We've now got a, a two different options that can create a very large scale 4-4. And we can actually block and then sacrifice, uh, so that way we really don't lose too much momentum either. Uh, trample would be terrible uh, if the opponent had Trample. So let's see. Oh, very cool. That's a very good card, unfortunately. Uh, the 1-1 one, one counters are huge, or the negative 1-1 one, negative one counters are huge. Okay. Obviously nothing we can do, this is just gonna happen. It's really up to them if they want to <clears throat> uh, pay the one, which they do. Cool, works for me. All right, let's see if they attack. Um, I think the right call is to attack, but maybe not, and they do. All right, so let's make sure we're in full control just to be very, very safe. And then let's do this. Uh, that also happens to trigger here, which is great. All right, uh, now we are talking. So we definitely are just going to go this route. I don't see a huge reason not to. Uh, I am going to equip it to the Smith and not the count the uh, the token, excuse me, only because uh, there is a world where they just have a bounce spell, in which case that token uh, is such an easy target. Whereas this is still an easy target, but at least we get some value out of it, if that makes sense. Um, and that lifelink is really getting us out of range, hopefully. Uh, that's kind of all we really need to do. <clears throat> nice that they just got, uh, drew a land there, I assume. Um, that's, that's pretty huge, especially a tapped land. <clears throat> Don't love this, naturally. Uh, but again, we do get the same trick twice here, right? We just get to block and then sack the thing. And they don't have trample, so even if they do attack, we should be okay. I almost think, like, is this a sorcery? It is, so they had to play it this turn. That's fair. I was going to say, it's almost better not to, if it was an instant, to play it on our turn. Um, but obviously they had to, so I get that. They do get to draw a couple cards here, though. So if they did get anything too, you know, overly exciting, uh, we might have an issue, but we'll see. What's nice is so much of our deck is just equipment, uh, which allows us to kind of replay very quickly. And especially with the foundries, like, we've just got answers, you know, um, which really helps us out. Okay. That's very good uh, and scary. I think we have to do this now because otherwise it's just gonna die. Cool. Pretty easy. Um, yeah. So they are gonna attack him for three. That's interesting. Oh, yes. All right, guys, there we go. We are two for two. We are killing it. Let's keep it going, guys. We got some more games to play. Let's see if we can get another win. What's going on, guys? We are back for game number three. Let's see if we can keep this up. We are doing surprisingly well. Uh, pretty stoked about this, actually. Um, 
I think we can go ahead and run this out and then we'll play that uh, retrofitter foundry. Pretty easy start. I mean, we just go for the ingenious myth. The double metallic rebuke isn't necessarily exciting, uh, but it looks like we are just going to be against the same deck again, uh, which is fine. Let's go ahead and do this. Get that smith down. I fully anticipate they will be able to kill this, but I think we just take the portable hole. It's the answer to the soul scar mage, um, <clears throat> which is really all, again, that's our goal, is just to be able to kind of answer everything they do. Uh, specifically with their creatures. They did not get a land? Oh! <laughs> well, this should be fun. Um, excellent. So we are 100% going to portable hole. <laughs> get that out of there. Let's make sure we're taxing their draws as well. Uh, and grab two damage right off the bat. So now we actually have Metallic Rebuke just to counter. Uh, and they are running low on lands, so... Um... I'm gonna be mean. I think. I think I need to be mean. I don't want them drawing any cards. Uh, and, you know, as mean as this sounds, <laughs> like, the reality is, uh... It's just kind of a good, good, easy way to annihilate that. Uh, alright, sick. Let's get a glass casket, that's pretty simple. Hit for four and hope they don't have a land. We do have a metallic rebuke still. Uh, and so we basically just get to counter whatever they do this turn. If it's a creature, we'll glass cask it. Um, and they are pretty much done. I actually think we let that hit. I don't think we worry about that. Uh, we will rebuke that. Just to make sure we are completely removing any threats. Wow, we have drawn every metallic rebuke. I think. We might have one more. That's amazing. Uh, alright. <laughs> I think we're pretty set. Um, alright, cool. Uh, we got a Metallic Rebuke to counter their next hit, and we are good. That was an easy three, guys. Easy, easy three. We're doing pretty well with this Azorius deck. Let's keep it up. By the way, I should mention, in case you haven't played an event before, it's a series, you're trying to get to seven wins before you get three losses. I forgot to mention that at the beginning, totally my fault. If you get three losses before you hit those seven wins, you're done. You're, you get whatever record is, is your current record. But if you can get to seven wins, that's obviously the best. So that's what we're shooting for. So far, we got three. Let's hope, let's, let's hope we can make it four. All right, guys, and here we are for game number four. Uh, how do we feel about this? I think we'll try it. Not overly optimistic, but I don't think this is actually that bad. Uh, anytime you get a retrofitter foundry in your opening hand, you've probably got an out to make a reasonable enough start. Uh, we also have the metallic rebuke, which is obviously quite helpful. Uh, let's go here and let's... Well, I guess we should wait until the end of their turn. Um, we also could metallic rebuke this turn, depending on what they do. Yeah, I'm just going to get that out of there. Not into that uh, at all. <laughs> this is going to be a very potentially frustrating game, depending on how this ends up going. Uh, all right, so I think we just wait. Uh, throw out a 1-1 next turn, and then maybe start to climb the ladder for the, the retrofitter foundries. Um, I think that might be the move. We could also get to Thought Monitor mana pretty easily, or just have like a Nettle Cyst for a lot. All right, so let's go ahead. We'll throw out a 1-1. One, one. It's going to cheapen up the Thought Monitors, which is great. Uh, worth noting, when you have a Thought Monitor in your hand, or really anything with Affinity, anytime you have a 1-mana artifact, it's essentially basically just going to cheapen up this, so it's like a freebie spell. Don't just jump for the Affinity play. Go for the little cheap stuff first, and that will cheapen up the Affinity. It's kind of just basic math, but just worth noting, you know, in case you didn't think about it. All right, they did have a land. Interesting. Okay, uh, that's great. That's really, really great. Perfect. Um, I am just gonna thought monitor, hoping to hit a land here, honestly. Um, and there we go. We hit two. That's great. All right. Uh, with that in mind, we'll go here. Um, and yeah, I'll just throw this out. Easy. Obviously, not gonna attack. There's no reason to. 
And this is the turn that we do need to be afraid of. If they have a Righteous Valkyrie or any kind of, you know, big four mana spell too would be pretty scary. But we do have another Thought Monitor coming down for one and a Nettle Cyst that can just start attaching itself to like a Thought Monitor. That's going to help against particularly an Angel's deck just because um, it get it, I mean, it outpowers most of what they've got, but it also uh, really helps to trim down their life total. Um, so even if they don't block, yep, there it is. Coco is amazing. Kind of surprised they played it now. Personally, I think it's usually better to play this as like right before blockers. Um, so that way you can kind of surprise block. This is instant speed. So that's worth noting, but this is certainly a great play. Well done opponent. They get a lot of life out of the deal. They are gonna trigger these, uh, both of these, which is terrifying. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go here. Mostly because I do want to um, deal with as much of this as possible. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Okay. Nettle Sis is gonna come down. That's a big 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, do we just attach the Nettle Cyst to the Thought Monitor and get an attack in? I don't know that we do yet. I think we go here first. It's going to draw us a couple cards, obviously. Oh, very good. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Sick. Let's get you off the field. For sure. <laughs> It's not a card I want to deal with. I will attack him for four here. If they want to trade, that's great. It's less power coming in at us. Uh, there's no reason not to attack here, in my opinion. It, it just seems like the obvious play. They're just going to take the four. That seems fine. I'm assuming they have another Coco this turn. That's like the worst scenario, so I'm assuming that's what it is. This is also our most likely loss opportunity so far. Um, very likely that we just lose this game. Uh, especially, they can't quite activate the Resplenda Angel yet. That's helpful to know. Um, but these do have Vigilance. They just get to attack in. Super, super chill. That's terrifying. I think we take the 8. I really wish we had Shadow Spear right now. Uh, that would be, like, such a flex. But, not a lot going there. All right. Wow, they had a Bishop. Interesting. So we kind of get to do everything, right? We've got three plus two. Yeah. So throw you down. Throw you down. Hmm. Think we're just gonna die. <laughs> um. We do have an out-ish, but it's not a great one. These also don't have trample. That's part of why we really just need the, the Shadow Spirit. That was a silly attack. Why did I even do that? Um, so we do this to give ourselves the flyer. Right, yeah. Okay, uh, it's the best we could do. Um, yeah, unfortunately, so we can block, but now they've got all the lands too. I think this is pretty much in the bag, right? They've got, they can give lifelink. Interesting they went for that and not just the Resplendent Angel. I mean, I guess that's fair. Either way is fine, but yeah, we're dead. <laughs> we're really dead. Uh, man, I hate that. We've been doing really well though. I'm not upset by the loss. I'm more upset just because I think given um like a shadow spear or something we probably could have at least put up more of a fight i just feel like we didn't give ourselves very much options or very many options i should say very much options that's a terrible way to phrase that uh yeah so we do this we'll go into full control because what we can do is sacrifice this to the foundry uh yeah I'm assuming they're going to give it, yeah, to the... Yeah, that's fine. Mm. Feels terrible. So they gain five. That's going to allow them some counters. Uh, yeah. 
trying to think if there's a way we can win. I don't think there is. This has been, I mean, they had a great, great start also. This was perfect. So well done, opponent. This deck is always really exciting. Yeah, there they go. We'll see what we... I, I'm just going to concede. There's really no way we can dig out of that. We don't have a sweeper, so truthfully there was just no option. Might as well go ahead and concede now. Save us a little bit of time. We do... Uh, so what is our current record? 3-1, and one, if I'm not mistaken? Let's just double check before we go into game, I think, 5. Yeah, so we are 3-1. and one. Gotta get to that 7 wins if we can. Let's see if we can do it. Alright guys, and here we are. Uh, I actually really like this hand. Uh, it's very land heavy for sure, but it does have the action of portable hole if we need it. We can go ahead and get the bridge down this turn because there's really no reason to play it uh, any of the other lands, so this seems pretty straightforward. Okay, uh, I think we just go Dark Steel Citadel. I think we're just trying to get to Thought Monitor as quickly as we can. We've got all the removal in the world, but this is the gate stack. This is going to be scary. Uh, very, very scary. Alright, so... Um, let's portable hole first. I am just going ahead and doing this now. It does have reach, so it's like an easy, easy out. I um, think we just entered this tapped, and that's it. <laughs> Not a very exciting start, but it should get a lot more exciting once we get these thought monitors down. There's the guild summit. Yep. Alright, uh, let's get Citadel down. Okay, um, that's definitely scary. Let's get the Thought Monitor in. They are not, they don't have any lands though. That's kind of interesting. Um, do I play the other Thought Monitor? I actually don't think so. I think we wait because we do have the Metallic Rebuke. That's so good. Yeah, the Metallic Rebuke is so good right now get that gates of blaze out of here all right sick um let's see first things first we'll drop this let's go to attacks obviously hit for two i am gonna go ahead and thought monitor here um as much as i don't want to overcommit, we kind of just need stuff um yeah i suppose we can esper sentinel again don't love it We'll hold on to the uh, Ornithopters. Not that they're going to do very much, of course, but uh, they're easy backup plays to blocks or whatever we need. There's the other Gates of Blaze. All right. I'm assuming they pay the one. Yeah. Fair enough. We kind of expected it, so that's not that's not a surprise. Let's go ahead and Ingenious Smith. We'll save the Dark Steel Citadel so we can just automatically have a, uh, a solution here. And that is very good. Let's go ahead and Nettle Cyst. Um, I don't think we have to play the Ornithopters quite yet. Again, in case they have a sweeper, I, I just want to be able to sol like not overcommit. They're not going to be able to deal 7 to this easily. That's fine. Easy solution to a very scary problem normally. <laughs> awesome. Uh... Now I think we just kind of go for it. Hope for the best. <laughs> we got big stuff. You know what I mean? Oh, we could have won. Oops. Oh, God. Miss Lethal. That's terrible. We could have equipped the Nettle Cyst to the Smith, and they wouldn't have had anything to do about it. They still might not. Like, truthfully, it's still pretty difficult for them to deal with, but that would have definitely won the game. So if we lose, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Only because we messed up. But it looks like we are going to be able to take the win here, so I'm not going to overthink it. We're just going to attack in. Boom! We got it, guys. We are killing it! This is going really well so far. I'm very stoked. Uh, we are 4-1, and one, guys. We got to get to that 7 mark if we can. Let's see if we can do it. Let's go into game 6. All right, guys, let's do it. Let's see if we can get another win. As we are jumping into game six right now, I just want to ask you guys very quickly. I know we are at 30-ish minutes right now. We've got some time that it's going to take, obviously, to finish out this video. 
What I wanted to ask though is specifically, do you guys feel like having longer form videos like this, where we get a full event in, it's not just like one or two, maybe even three games. Instead, we get a larger handful of games. Is that more exciting for you guys? Or would you prefer the shorter form gameplay, those kinds of things? Those are the kinds of like little pieces we're trying to piece together in the early part of this year so we can ensure we're doing the best we can for you guys. Uh, and so if that's something that uh, you have an opinion on, please let me know. It would be hugely, hugely helpful. All right. Uh, so goblins, this is terrifying. Really hate playing against goblins because they're always so frustrating. Um, all right, let's attack in first. Curious to see if they block. They do. Interesting. Um, okay, with that in mind, I'm just gonna go Ingenious Smith, I think. Um, ooh, I do really like that. Although, Portable Hole naturally is gonna be quite good here. Yeah, I think maybe we just have to play against the deck we're playing against, you know? And basically go really heavy-handed into the removal pieces of this. Okay, both of those are terrifying. Curious if they just attack or no. Okay, they're just gonna go ahead and kill. That was the only downside to running the Smith out there is we don't have an option to, to do anything about it. Um, hmm. Again, I'm just gonna force the issue and attack first uh, because I do think that's probably just gonna be the best play. Uh, we then have to follow that up with, depending on if they block or not, I really hope they just block. That would be great. Awesome. That solves our problem. That 100% was going to be an issue. So now we can go for the Ingenious Smith. Uh, use the Hollowed Fountain to follow it up with the uh, the Esper Sentinel. And then, um, th basically, they can't use the Firebrand to kill the Smith in response. So that was just like the easiest and safest way to do that. <clears throat> I'm surprised they blocked, honestly. Like, at this stage in the game, I don't know that I would, but that's fine. Is this just 1-1 one, one goblins, like, the whole way? Because at that point, we probably didn't need all the removal. <laughs> like, not that scary, if I'm honest. Um, we do need to actually get some work done here, though, so I am going to go ahead. Let's get the, the ringleader out of there just to get some damage in. Um, and yeah, we'll just attack in for a lot. Um... I'll wait to, to use the Retrofitter Foundry because we can just kind of use this to surprise block or do whatever we need to do. Nice! Very good. I'm so glad we have a solution to that problem. Um, this seems like not a great deck against Affinity. It doesn't feel as fast. Affinity is so good. Like, it's ridiculous, man. Uh, let's go here. Let's go give the uh, Ingenious Smith a little, little buff. All right. Glass casket. Get you out of there. So it's not a problem anymore. Um, Alright. Swag. Let's go. Down to one. Uh, we probably could have killed them, couldn't we? Probably. Alright, let's throw Ornithopter out there. And let's see what they do. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is like aggro versus aggro. But I do think Affinity is like pretty clearly... A stronger build than these like little mono red interesting <laughs> style decks I'm not sure what the best way to phrase it is all right there we go we got there that is win number five I think I'm right did I have fun yeah I did it was great uh, I think it's win number five we're gonna double check before we jump into the next one I think so right because that was game number six and we've had one loss so yes I think that's correct look at all that guys we are two wins away let's see if we can do it Let's go. All right, guys, and here we are for game number seven. I just said that. Uh, let's not keep this. If we had any colored mana, that hand would have been amazing. Uh, but unfortunately, we just didn't. So uh, I actually think Deserted Beach is the throwaway. That might be incorrect. I'm not really sure, but I think that's fine. Turn one, we can Hollowed Fountain with the Ornithopter. 
uh, which is just kind of a easy starting point. And turn two, we can kind of do a lot of different stuff. We could either Ingenious Smith or just leave up Metallic Rebuke. Or straight kill that. That seems better. Yeah, I don't want that to be on the field. So we're going to just go ahead and just, just not worry about it. Uh, any life gain style deck is going to be great against Affinity for the most part. Um, we saw that, of course, with the Angels list, but the reality is they are offsetting so much of the damage that we are trying to deal to them very early, and therefore it's just harder for us to, to handle it. Uh, perfectly fine, It's that's just the reality of it. Alright, uh, we'll play you. We'll play you. And, ooh, uh, that might be the move. Did not get a solution to our problem. Uh, and so I'm just gonna go here. I think relatively straightforward. I'm not gonna worry too much about it. The Retrofitter Foundry would have been also very good, but um, I think Metallic Rebuke here is pretty reasonable. Do we kill the Youthful Valkyrie or do we wait? I think we just kill it. It's gonna enter with a counter on it. Um, it's not really something like, they don't have a Righteous Valkyrie this turn. That's a good one, but still, we can kill it a little easier, uh, which is helpful. And obviously, I'm just going to take the two. I'm not going to worry about that. That might be the, s the flex play, right? Yeah, I'm going to go this route. Uh, might be incorrect. Truthfully, I don't know. Um, and I'm actually going to attack here. If they want to double block to allow us to kill one of their things, great. Uh, but I didn't think they would want to, so... That's cool. Um, yeah. There's the scary play. Okay. Soul Warden is so terrifying. Don't have a Righteous Valkyrie. Okay. All right, so they at least have now played their entire hand. I'm very glad we took the Youthful Valkyrie off the table. Uh, I think that was going to be the worst of it, so that's good. Let's make sure we go into full control. Okay. And then that allows us to go here. Now, they are going to gain some life out of the deal here, but we also don't lose as much life, and we get a 4-4 and an extra counter on our Ingenious Smith. So that seems better uh, for sure. All right. Um, let's attack with the 4-4s to start. They may block with the Lunark Veteran. That's like a fairly straightforward play. We win this race, right? Like, eventually we would win this race. Um, do we go for the Esper Sentinel? I think we do. We could have gone for the Nettle Cyst as well, which is probably, honestly, the better play. It might have been a mistake. Uh, the reason being, again, we're just trying to outrace them. Like, at this point, that's our biggest worry. Uh, and so we just need every opportunity to deal as much damage as we can, and Nettle Cyst obviously is going to be quite good at that. Yep, that's good. That blocks a 4-4 pretty efficiently. Um, so they're obviously going to attack in. We're going to go into full control. We're going to block here and pull the same trick twice. Just to save as much damage as possible, but also be able to deal as much damage as possible. We also have a 6-6 six -six now, so that's good. Oh, yes! Ha! Huh. Amazing. Beautiful. That is... So good. Anytime you draw a Shadow Spear in this kind of deck, it just feels so right. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, they can block here, and that's fine. Um, the reality is we're just trying to represent as much damage as we can. Wow! They took it! They took it! That's amazing. I would have at least blocked the 4-4. Four -four. Wow. Guys, that was insane. That should not... I don't think that should have happened. We probably should have been able to, like... They should have had an extra turn there, I think. That's a little interesting. All right, well, hey, guys, we are six and one. We've got to get one more win to go all the way to seven, guys, and get the 500 gems, three packs, and a play-in point. Let's see if we can do it. We got one more game. Technically two more if we lose. We'll see. All right, guys, and here we are for what could potentially be our last game we'll see uh but i definitely am okay with this hand <clears throat> it's not amazing by any means but it is good enough that i think we can keep it uh we can get the deserted beach down turn one that'll give us our mana colors that we need 
uh, because we really only have the Ornithopter as a, a turn one play anyway. So that's pretty straightforward. We'll see what we can do. Um, looks like potentially a Rakdos build. That's interesting. I don't think I've faced a Rakdos build with this prior to now. So we'll see. Uh, cool. Let's go here. Um, I'm, mm, I'm suspicious. I'm real suspicious. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna leave up the Metallic Rebuke. I'm not sure if we need to or not, I'll be honest. Uh, but getting the spike down, while it would be very helpful because we do have a Nettle Cyst. What is this? Spin mana is or mana of any color. Um, I'm just gonna, just gonna get this out of there. Again, may not need to do this. I feel like maybe that's not as scary a card as I think it is, but I am not cool with them gaining extra value like that. So, we're gonna do it. Um, all right. Swag. Let's go here. <clears throat> Nettle Sis seems very good against... Uh, I mean, they could obviously just have a straight-up removal spell, which would suck, but um, four damage on its own if they just use burn is a little tricky, uh, and so my hope is that they can't just burn us out. Sick. They can't. Very good. All right. Um, let's go... Hmm go here uh, I'm gonna attack for six first and see if we even need to use the portable hole I didn't think we did all right excellent that just means we don't have to take the extra damage here so something to note there guys it would have been super super easy for us to just use the portable hole get the goblin out of there and immediately get in for six in that case it would have been seven damage that's obviously very good that really is going to help us in terms of finishing the game faster. At the same time, it's not as efficient as maybe it could have been otherwise. And what I mean by that is they blocked with it. We now have a portable hole in our hand that we can use at any time. Uh, and that's kind of helpful. So like there is some benefit to allowing that. It depends on the deck you're against for the most part that you would want to do something like that. Um, <clears throat> thankfully, like that's a little scary. Diabolic intent is actually terrifying. Um, but I think it's okay in this case. Now this one, I will probably just go ahead and portable hole, uh, because I don't want it to die, I want it to be exiled. You know what I mean? So let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna go ahead and get the trap finder out of there. Perfect. Uh, they do have one black mana available. I don't know what they could have. Maybe Fatal Push? <clears throat> they might just sacrifice this. They fatal pushed their own creature just to gain the ability. Sure. Seems pretty good, actually. I mean, that's a clever play. There's no doubt about that. Definitely just going to go ahead and uh, stake out as much as we can and get 10, 10 damage in. That seems pretty good. So we have a glass casket, which will hit the um, reflection of Kiki Jiki here. <clears throat> um, they've got three cards in the hands. Ashnod's Altar. Wow, great card. This is a really cool little deck that they've built. Spell cost to the beginning of your upkeep. Sacrifice this creature. Okay. This is fascinating. This is a really cool little build. Whatever this is, I'm super into it. Is this a never ending combo? That's going to be annoying. Do we, do we just lose? I'm confused exactly as to what's happening, uh, but this is really cool. <laughs> no doubt about that. That's so good right now. So this just is free. So this is free mana every time, is that right? I have no clue. This is amazing. I've. I really need to brush up on Historic, clearly. Alright, Bajuka Bog they had. That's fascinating. Alright. Draft a card from the spellbook. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I'm just letting them do their thing. I don't know if there's an end to this or not. Um... 
Do they just get to steal everything? They get to sacrifice our creature, <coughs> which is terrifying. Yeah. I'm thinking they just win. I don't know, they can't just like, like they might be able to kill our board. It doesn't seem like they're gonna be able to attack in for the win is the only thing I would say. But maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. They get to cycle through their deck theoretically. Sure. <laughs> okay. This is insane. I really like this. I'm super into this. I wanna play this deck. Let me know if you guys have played this or if you want to see this played, because I certainly do. They did play the land, that's interesting. Um, they didn't have to, right? They could have Shatter Skull Smashing. Although I guess they don't have colored mana. Hmm. Well, guys, again, great time to mention. Uh, so first and foremost, guys, again, I do hope you had a fantastic holiday. Couple things I do want to go ahead and talk about. Um, our Patreon. Uh, hopefully you saw an ad for it. I don't know if I'll have had it done by the time this video goes out. Um, but if you did see a little Patreon ad, we're doing something a little different this year. Uh, I wanted to kind of reinvigorate the Patreon a little bit. I felt like it was getting a little stale. Just personal opinion. Um, you guys have been great, don't get me wrong. I just felt like there wasn't a whole lot of crazy value there anymore. And I wanted to give you guys a little something special. Uh, and thankfully with AI and some of my own Photoshop skills as well, like we were able to create something really unique uh, for the January Patreon rewards, which are Art Deco style sweepers. Uh, and they look amazing in my opinion. I'm so excited about those because truthfully, I do think they just look phenomenal. Uh, and so if you guys are interested, please do check that out. Please don't feel pressured. Of course, I I'm not trying to get you guys to spend money on us if you don't have the money or if you just don't want to, that's fine. Um, but if you're, if you're at this point in the video and you've enjoyed the video this far, it would certainly mean a lot to us if you would at least consider it. Uh, and if you do and you decide you want to go support there, we would be hugely, hugely grateful. And of course, we would love to have you uh, as part of our Patreon community. Additionally, uh, we do have dual lands uh, that were also AI generated. Um, and again, some edits on my end, but mostly AI generated uh, that are available for pre-order in our online store. That's at our website at resolvesmtg.com. Uh, if you would like to check that out, we would again, really appreciate it. Uh, you don't need to buy any of it if you don't want to, uh, but it is there for you in case you would like to. Again, in my opinion, they look stunning. We also have some new stickers and some cool little things there that we will be adding to quite a bit over the course of the next couple months. Uh, that's something that both John and I have talked about and really want to push forward. Uh, and so do, do expect to see a lot of that as we move forward. I think we're gonna get a lot more uh, exciting products into our store very soon. Uh, and in that case, again, hopefully it's something you guys are interested in. Uh, all that to say, I think this game is like, <laughs> kind of run its course. I don't really know what's happening anymore. They are still just cycling through. But I still don't see how they win the game this turn. <clears throat> I don't see that they've got a haster. I mean, this is all really cool. But do we wait it out? I mean, I don't want this video to be crazy long. We're almost at an hour already. I don't know. I'm gonna give it, cause this is endless. Like they just keep doing this. Um, I, I'm gonna assume that eventually they will get a salute. Wait, actually there's a timer. No, there's not. All right. I don't, I don't know what's happening. They just get to do it again. That's my thing. I'm just not really sure what's going on here. <laughs> This is all really cool, but like, we have a nettle cyst that can attach to a thought monitor and deal a lot of damage. Uh, and that's really enough to kill them still, so I'm not like, concerned by any of this. Does that kill? Does that do anything? It is a flyer, worth noting. That was what they were looking for. Uh, that still doesn't solve their problem at all, because we do have the glass casket. All of this, <laughs> all of this, 
and we still just get to kill them. I'm so glad we did not give up. Uh, that was a lot of work for a 2-2 flyer, man. I do not see that as being overly worth it. But with that being said, guys, we did it. We got seven wins. We only got one loss out of eight games. We were able to uh, secure the seven straight wins. Let's go ahead and claim that prize, guys. Heck yes. What? What are these packs? Let, let's end on a bombshell. That is terrible. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Welcome back. I hope you all had a fantastic holiday. Hopefully, if you do an event, you get better packs than this. <laughs> Bye.